dividing the human family through the ballot box. We are worried about Cuba's present and future and want to put this climate of violence behind us, replacing it with one of democracy and civilized order, not absolute tyranny or desperate anarchy. Our aim is that the present government, Batista government, leave power by the lawfully expressed majority will of the people, and that a democratic system and institutional order be established that jealously protects human life. Cuba wins by a legitimate and orderly transfer of power towards its victorious people and their lawful representatives. Otherwise, and here comes Cassandra, otherwise the homeland will be lost to implacable violence, a totalitarian dictatorship, and blind and bloody revenges. And the still the bloody revenges are going on, and still the uh, totalitarian <coughs> dictatorship is, is in power. So, let me read another one, okay? Uh, the last, which he, my dad called it, the last grand battle. This is fascinating, I am sure, for you, because you expect that the, the dictatorship had control everything, radio and television. The dictatorship didn't control that, not only didn't control that, that allowed the opposition to speak uh, freely to the Cuban people. And this is what my father said uh, early in 1958 in Cuba, I quote, the moment had arrived to make a choice either to stand with those who advocate a solution based on law and order in order to preserve the institutions that date back to the establishment of the Republic in 1962, excuse me, 1902, and had served Cubans well, or with proponents of the lawless, violent revolution proposed by Castro and his associates. In that historical moment, supporting a lawful, orderly solution did not presuppose standing together with Batista, as many who never understood the situation thought. Standing for a lawful, orderly solution meant standing up for Cuba's democracy, now threatened and in danger of being destroyed, and eventually, as you know, it happened. So here is Cassandra once, once more you know, say this is what's going to happen. Okay, let me also see what he was writing at that time about Castro's revolution. Okay, this is, as you can see, this is very painful <laughs> to write. Okay, okay, okay. This is expressed to the Cuban people. Castro is not fighting Batista to restore democracy in Cuba. For him, the war against Batista had the double purpose of checkmating those who advocated electoral compromise, his formula, and second, to subject the other revolutionary factions to his leadership, which was actually happening. A handful of Cuban, of Cuban politicians were able to discern, you have been able to discern this, but because of physical fear of being attacked by Castro uh, for uh, goons, by the way, the previous statement <coughs> he made on television when he was getting out of television, they tried to kill him. Or because of their irresponsibility of moral cowardice, they either join they will they are either joining Castro's or simply remaining silent. For us, who we were anguished that behind Castro's insurgency stood the communist insurgency stood the communist movement. The national solution does not consist of the idea that the regime would abandon all its powers and that Batista would suddenly reign, resign, unless first a collective agreement would be reached so as to secure the public order and the honest result 
of a national election. He was talking to the revolutionaries, but he as well talked to the Batista government, and here is absolutely that man could see beyond the future. He said, if the elections are rigged and dishonest, uh, the republic will collapse. And the republic collapsed six weeks after they rigged the elections. Uh, I'd like to also, also refer here to the U.S. approach and U.S. policy toward Cuba at that time. The propaganda is incredible. They say that Batista was backed by the United States and uh, Castro was able to defeat not only Batista but the United States as well. You're going to see here with documents and everything that the United States was not from the middle of 57 behind Batista. On the contrary, the United States decided, let me rephrase that, the Secretary of State John Foster Dutz was so busy with the problems of Berlin and uh, Moscow and so on that paid no attention to the problem in Cuba. And uh, it left that problem to the officers of the fourth floor. It's known today as the officers of the fourth floor. And the fourth floor was a hotbed of Castro sympathizers. <coughs> And they began to change the policies of the United States. They began to support Fidel under the table. They began to allow him to bring weapons and ammunition from the United States. <clears throat> the ambassador of the United States to Cuba, uh, Earl T. Smith, I have to say was also a very brilliant man. The minute he came to Cuba and was sworn in, gave the papers to uh, the government, he realized what the situation was immediately and began to appeal to the fifth floor. The fifth floor is where John Foster Douglas was, but he was never paid attention to. Now, in March or February of 58, the United States embargoed weapons for Batista and began absolutely, almost in the open, to support the revolution. The reasons for, they still remain dark. Was it because they've been accused of being a bunch of crypto communists in the State Department? I don't know, that's very hard to prove. And unless a historian has a proof in his hand, that I was trained to do. Unless you have the documents, you cannot make an accusation like that. But definitely, uh, it was not a dictatorship backed by the United States. Smith, the ambassador, and the documents are there, said the policy of the United States at this moment is not to do that. The policy of the United States is to uh, have Batista. Uh, you have to send a warning to Batista that he has to do the elections honestly and count the votes and then stop the sending arms and ammunition of Castro and, and then promote, you know, back a, uh, a, an electoral solution, which was that my father and his party was advocating for. They ignore that. They ignore Ambassador Smith. They ignore even my dad's memos that were sent to the uh, State Department. And there is one that I found in, a, you know, searching the, uh, the, uh, internet and documents and so on that is, you know, in its simplicity. They ask him, what do you think should be the case, the solution in Cuba? And my dad answered, it's very simple. It is very simple. Either Batista counts the votes and then we take over the government, or if he doesn't, the revolutionaries and Castro will win. <coughs> So the State Department was getting all of this information, all of these recommendations, and they never paid attention to it. So it's not true that the United States was behind Batista, because that is the usual cliche that we hear, that the United States supports all the dictators and so on. Well, we're kind of changing the policy now, because uh, I am very disturbed with what's happening in Honduras, you know, because 